Well, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. I mean, four billion. What? I mean, four billion in a year. <laughs> On a free game. On a free game. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's good money. <laughs> good money. They about to get the pants sued off them, though. That's good money. Yeah, about like three different people. Three, four different people. That I know of, at least. Mm -hmm. What was that? Uh, Happy ladies. <laughs> Sabbath peace. <laughs> Another opportunity for us to hear and learn that the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience you may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Mm -hmm. so last week, you know what I'm saying, y'all had me all the way off track. I don't even think we talked about what we talked about. Wasn't it Danielle that got that started? She tried to orchestrate... You know what I'm saying? Starting us off at, what was it, Micah? Was it Malachi? No, it was, uh... Where you had us starting off at? Daniel had y'all started off at. I bet. How, how much she, how much she pay you? <laughs> <laughs> Did she even pay you yet? Man, I ain't collect yet. All right, man. You gotta collect time. Was it Habakkuk, right? That's what it was, right? Was I don't know what it was. was Daniel, it? remember? She trying to act like, you know? I think it was. Yeah. Where, uh, where we starting today? I know it was verse 10. That's all I know. What we got? Baby, what you got? Just pick a book. Just figure it out. First John. Okay. I like that. First John. You didn't try starting the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? First John. No. Okay. First John. One through five. What we got? Four. All right. First John chapter four. Four through 23, I think. I mean, one through 23. I think. Somewhere around there. What, what we got? Give me a verse. One through 20. We got four. First John. Daniel or not. What we working with? 18. So this is uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Let's see how this thing pulls it together. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. <clears throat> there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. Mm -hmm. He that fears is not made perfect in love. He said, if you got fear, then you have not been made perfect in love. Keep reading. Let's see what this is talking about. We love him because he first loved us. Uh huh. If a man say I love God and he and hates his brother, he is a liar. Uh huh. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Mm hmm. And this commandment have we from him that he who loves God loves his brother also. Uh huh. That's it. All right. So we look at it. Perfect love casts out all fear. All right. So we're gonna go there and then let's uh let's uh. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 real quick. It's Matthew chapter 5. Let's talk about perfection. It's Matthew chapter 5. You can give me about verse... Um, give me verse 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come, that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets... Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. For whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. For I say so now you, we know. Danielle was lightning, you know what I'm saying? She was lightning the lady of Tina. You know what I'm saying? She, when, did, when did you lighten her? When else? Somebody else I'll read it. You was like, now if you hit her off with that, didn't you? He hit her off with that thing. Made me proud of him. I said, look at that. You know what I'm saying? I said, look at that. You look at this stuff. People don't understand. People don't get that verse. Let me say, that's a special thing to get that verse. I ain't, I can't, I, I tell you right now, I don't think I ever met somebody randomly that I didn't already know that understood that. The man telling you right there, hey, get, you got Christians arguing right now, talking about, you know what? See, if you keep the law, then 
that means you putting your faith in the law, and that means that you can't be saved. So they think just by keeping the law, you fall fell from grace. Right? Then you got Hebrew, you know what I'm saying, or the other Christians that keep the law, and they're going to tell you what? Well, you got to keep the law. You don't keep the law. You know what I'm saying? They always throw some weasel word in there to the best of your ability. You know what I'm saying? They always throw some, because everybody thinks it's impossible to keep the law. So to the best of your ability, then that means, you know what I'm saying, that you can't be saved. Right? So they put both sides. One side says you got to keep the law. Other side say if you do keep the law, then you can't be saved. You know what I'm saying? You got you to just do what Jesus said, but if you even try to keep the law, you can't be saved. But in one verse, the man light all that up. He said in one verse, listen. Read it for me. 19. In one verse. First he tried to tell you, I didn't come to, get, to do away with the law. That get the Christians right up out of there. Right? They just get that down. They, now they confound it. But watch what he say next. For whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments, and these least commandments, uh -huh. and shall teach men so. So not only did they break it, but they also went to other people and they said, you know what? You should break it too. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Guess what that's talking about? Who is that talking about? It's talking about someone that obeys him. Who would that, I mean, who would, you know what I'm saying? Like, give me an example of who might that be. Gentiles. Gentiles. I'm talking about Christians. Right? I'm not, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't fall under the category that no Christians are going to get into the kingdom. I don't fall under that category. Right? I believe that there will be Christians that get into the kingdom. Some of them have, you know what I'm saying, have a heart will, will they, they do what the books say, they look at what Yahushua say, and they, they respect his teaching. Right? I believe there will be some Christians that make it into the kingdom. However, the book is trying to let you know those Christians or whoever, whatever group that is, that tell people, listen, I broke the law. You know what I'm saying? And they're not going to say it like that. They're just going to tell you, you don't need to keep that. Right? You don't need to eat that way. You don't need to eat. Listen, just, just do this. All right? So not only are they breaking it, but they're teaching other people to break the law. The law of Moses, no, that's, that's done away with. You don't need to do that. It's not a sin. It's not true, but it's not a sin to tell somebody the law of Moses. You don't need to do that. The law of Moses, no, that's done away. You ain't sinning when you say that. It's false teaching. It can confuse people. It may lead people to sin, right? That might end up being a sin for you that you call somebody to stumble in it, right? But that in itself, just like we talk about Christmas, right? I mean, just, I mean, look, my family celebrate Christmas. I show up. Do, no, technically, no, you're not sinning, right? Not just that in itself. That might lead to sin. You might put a star on top of your tree, and now, guess what? Now that's idol worship. You don't see it that way. You put a cross, an angel on top, now that's idol worship, right? That becomes a sin, but in and of itself, let's say you got a tree, just got a couple bulbs on it. You know what I'm saying? You don't put that, you got a new elf thing they got? These people, look, these people silly. They put a darn elf and tell a tell little kid, a little terrifying kid, tell it that the elf is always watching. What they call it? Y'all ain't heard of that? Oh, Elf on the darn shelf is what they call it. I said, these people are darn sicko. You get to doing stuff like that, then I'm like, mm, that might be a little bit idolatry. You just lied to your kid and told him that this elf is watching. You know what they're just sick, these sickos. You know what they do? They move the elf around the house to mess with the kid. So like when they the kid is asleep, they put the elf in their in their room. Then the kid wake up, they put that thing in the living room. So when the kid walk out, I feel like, oh, just sick, bro. That thing is sick. I'm like. I, I don't know if I'm going to be white folks. I mean, I don't even know. That thing, that thing crazy. But, you know what I'm saying? The point is, you look at it, and they're, they're, they're keeping traditions that could easily turn into sin, right? Could easily, easily be something else. But at the start of it, it may not be sin, right? So in the same way, these Christians, man, they sit here and they be like, listen, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Just do what Jesus said. If you do that, then you'll be okay, right? All that law stuff, don't worry about it. And the books say, if they really do what the books say in terms of Yahushua and his commandments, that they will be what in the kingdom? Least. Who, who, who is going to be, who is the greatest person born of man? John the Baptist. Or born of a woman? John the Baptist. And he said, the books say, even the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Mm. John the Baptist, creme de la creme. Books say even the least. So I just want us to keep that in perspective, right? Because sometimes what will happen is we're getting to a point and we just get so caught up that we want people to keep the law like us. We can't have that attitude. We keep the law. We uphold the law, right? Well, 
Yeah. Some of y'all, you know what I'm saying? Eating spam for dinners and stuff. But that's all right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? For the most part. You know what I mean? For the most part. Oh, okay. My fault. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, you know what I'm saying? We keep the law. You know what I'm saying? So then, if we uphold the law and we keep the law, and somebody else is not doing it. Sometimes that put us in a position like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wait, you know what I'm saying? Why you not doing what? We got to stay away from that. We got to make sure that we say, listen, very first thing, you do what the Messiah say. That's your life. Right? That's your life. Do what the Messiah say. We can argue about the rest of this stuff later. Just do what the Messiah say. Right? Now then, when we exercise, like that, yeah, you know what I'm saying? When we exercise, when we just have, you know what I'm saying? We out there, we just have any conversation to, about precision. Right? About how the word should be taught. But that's different. You let it matter. You know what I'm talking about? Because now we just, we're not talking, we're not talking about how, how, how am I saved? Like, how do I, at this point, we just arguing, right? We're just trying to have a conversation to figure out who understands the word, what's the proper understanding of these precise details. Now you let them have it. You bring out the details on them, right? That's different, right? But when a person coming to you and they like, you know what I'm saying? I just, what must I do to be saved? No, I don't want to hear no. I, I never want to hear none of us tell somebody. They asking you how to be saved. So look, first thing you need to do is keep the feast days. Man, listen. Listen, feast day is good. That thing can help you out. That's not going to save you, but though. Right? That's just not going to save you. Now watch the next verse. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall do and teach them. So now if you do and you teach other people to do them, what's going to happen? Shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. That's the difference. That's the difference. Book just clear all that up. Oh, you can break the law and still make it into the kingdom. Oh, oh, you thought it was done away with. No, 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 no. If you keep it, your buddy be great in the kingdom. That's the difference. That's unity. You got all these people fighting. No, you got to keep the law. No, you just, you keep the law. You, you know what I'm saying? You fell from grace. All these people fighting in one verse, he unified. Like, listen, listen, listen. You keep the law. You don't keep the law. That's fine. Said. You just listen to me. Now, when you keep the law, I got you. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be a high. Trust me. When you keep the law, don't worry. You, you get in. You know what I'm saying? You'll be there. You know what I'm saying? You'll be around. You just, you just take the lowest seat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just sit your butt down. You know what I'm saying? You're right. You know what I'm saying? You might have to stand up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to stand in the back. You know what I'm saying? But you there, though. You know what I'm saying? And I can guarantee this. When we make it into the kingdom, I can guarantee you ain't going to nobody be like, man, I'm standing here. And they sitting. Ain't nobody, man, we gonna be just so happy to be there like, listen, man, I sit in the corner. That gotta be our attitude anyway. I sit in the corner. She talking about, I get to see the Messiah? Like, he right here? I get to see the man, most of God, walking with us? Oh, please. You know what I'm saying? I hang from the dark ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Hey! You know what I'm saying? We here. You know what I'm saying? That's what you gotta do. That gotta be our attitude. Our attitude just gotta be, well, let's get in. What'd it take to get in? All right? Keep going, though. That ain't what we came here for. We wanna talk about perfect. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed, to accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. What was the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees? They say, but they did not do. Right? Whole book, the, the man would call them hypocrites. Yeah. A lot of people look at that and be like, oh, see, you got to, you know what I'm saying? See, he trying to tell you, you got to exceed the Pharisees. That thing ain't hard. The man ain't never called the Pharisees, right? He ain't never, you'll never see in the book. He's like, oh, them Pharisees, you know what I'm saying? They doing it. No. He tell you the whole time, they ain't these people are hypocrites. Don't be, I mean, what they say, all right. Don't you do what they do, though. Don't you follow after them, boy. They preach the word right. Don't you do the stuff that they you catch them doing, though. That's crazy. That's how that thing end up? That's a tough thing, though. Like, uh, he preaching it right. He know it. That thing, and that condemn a man. Yeah. Right? Grab what we got. Let me see what we got. We will come right back here. This is Romans chapter 2. It's important. That thing fall for everybody, too. Right? That thing fall from everybody. This is Romans chapter, uh, do I want two? What, on, Romans chapter 1? Well, we just read it. Y'all should be able to help me. What is it, Romans chapter 1? Give me Romans chapter 2. Give me Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, old man. He said, therefore thou art inexcusable, old man. Why? Whosoever you are that judges. Uh-huh. Wherein thou judgest another, thou condemns thyself. For thou that judges does the same thing. So, I mean, a man preached the word right. Right? 
Everything he say, he everything he say is right based off of the word. But then he go out and do exactly what he said he wasn't gonna do, or say we, it what shouldn't happen. Where does that end up? Sin, hypocrite, man condemned. Ain't no way around it. Nobody get by. No way around it. Man gotta, man gotta eat that. Man gotta hold on to that. Right? Keep going. Watch this. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. That's right. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things and does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Nobody gets by. Watch this. Or, despise, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and Thank forbearance you. and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance? This is what we're here for. Right? Paul is trying to explain to the man, you who teach the word, right? Oh, yeah, you accurate, right? Act all, yeah, everything, I mean, everything just lined up and not, you know what I'm saying? You don't care for everybody, but then you go out and you do what you know you weren't supposed to do? He's trying to let you know you condemned yourself, right? Nobody else had to condemn you. You condemned yourself. And after that, he lets you know, do you hate God's grace? That leader what? To repent. That's what it's all about. Right? It don't matter who we are. At the end of the day, the whole point of the game is to turn away from what? Sin. That's what the Messiah asked for. Messiah came on the scene. First thing he said was what? To repent. Very first thing he said. They say, oh, and, and this was the beginning of his ministry. He didn't even let, he didn't even let Mark finish the sin. He's like, repent! Just jump out the book. Repent! The kingdom of God is upon you. That's the, that's the first commandment that he came out with. Repent. Turn away from sin. That's what it's all about. Right? Man turn away from sin. Man is all right with God. Y'all seen God hold a grudge? Who got hold a grudge again? Sinner. That's it. You a sinner. Book say very clearly, he said a man turn away from sin. And then what he going to remember about his life? He ain't going to remember his sins no more. I mean, but what if a righteous man turn away from righteousness and then he end up sinning? He ain't gonna remember his righteousness no more. What are you gonna do with that? It's gotta be fair. Both sides. It's a fair God. It's a fair God. That's all right. All right, let's see. What else we have? But after that gotta I... be our hope, right? Our hope gotta be that no matter what, at the end of the day, if we, if we wake up and we breathing, our life got to be like, okay, for sure, repent. Mm -hmm. We ain't got time for nothing else. We got to make it there. And we got to help each other make it there. Then get tough. Right? We got to be there. Where are we at? I don't want Romans no more. Do I still want Romans? No, no I don't want Romans no more. Where are we at? We was in Judges, right? We the judges. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, no, I wasn't done. You know what I'm saying? Where uh, were we at before Roman? We was in Matthew. Okay, oh, Matthew. Perfection. You know what I'm saying? Matthew. Yeah, give me Matthew. We probably left off about 21. 520. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. We already read 20, though. Yeah, well, 521. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Let's see what it's talking about. Ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Hold on, he said, whosoever shall kill shall be what? In danger of the judgment. Okay. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of the judgment. So listen to what he's saying. Whoever kill shall be in danger of the judgment. I'm telling you, though, if you even get angry with your brother, you're in danger of the judgment. Without a call. Without a cause, right? What is he saying? Like, what is he doing there? Raising a stake. Right? He raising a good old bar. We know what the law say, or what was said of old. He trying to let you know, okay, now let's bring it up a notch. Keep going, watch this. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. All right? He said, you can call your brother a fool. Right? 
That's why, that's why, you know what I'm saying? That's why I take it easy. Like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't calling nobody idiot. I ain't calling nobody dumb, stupid, retard. You know, dodo, right? All that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Just take it easy. Because we don't know. Right? Notice that what he's saying. That he didn't say it's a sin. He didn't say you're going to hell. He said you're in danger. Because what he's trying to do, he's trying to help us step away from that edge, right? That stuff get close. Right? You get real close. He trying to let you know, back up. Right? Keep yourself away from them edges. Right? Because when you get to that edge, you never know. You mess around, you know what I'm saying? Get too confident, slip, fall off. Right? He trying to keep you right in the middle. Just, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get too close. Look, that's for show back. Right? But come back over here because if you even get close enough, then it get, you in danger of falling. Right? Watch what he's saying. Keep going. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, uh -huh. and there remembers that thy brother has ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. Mm -hmm. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Mm -hmm. Agree with thine adversary quickly while you are in the way with him. Thus at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out from there, Till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Mm -hmm. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Right? So look what he said. He said, It's already been said, don't commit adultery. We know that that's a sin. Mm -hmm. Right? Let me raise the bar. Don't even look at another man's wife with lust. Because if you do, then you've already committed adultery in your heart. So now he's trying. Because what's going to happen next, right? I mean, you get to look in there and be like, oh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Next thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to actually go further. He trying to let you know. You know what I'm saying? Don't even do it. Don't even, don't even play around with it. Don't even play at the thought. That mess around just mess you up. Right? Keep moving. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Bring on I get a, yeah, he said your whole member cast in hell. Watch this. Don't give me a little pee. Do me a half. Eli. Oh, okay. I thought you knew. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know. I thought you knew. This is what I'm doing. I'm just, I mean, next time they turn on the light, you know, I'm going to be like, no, 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 no. It's for me. No, no, that's for me. No, no, no. no. The light for me. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I appreciate that all day. Don't touch the kids. Like, it, nobody ever turned on the water and it, it, it didn't come out like, no, no, no. That's for Philip. Water ain't never told y'all that, but it's all right. You know water come on every time. <laughs> they go to, they go to, they try to put something on the stove. You get that thing, click, click, click. That thing just click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. Oh, sorry. No, the reason I'm not coming on because that's for Philip. <laughs> no, that thing ain't never happened. They try to, you know what I'm saying, right away. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. That's all right. What else we got? Let me see. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. He said, if they, thy right hand offend you, what happened? Cut it off and cast it from you. Why? For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Right? So he's letting you know. Do whatever you need to do. He's explaining something to you right now. Watch this. Keep going. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Mm. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife except for the cause of fornication causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. Right? People be looking at this thing trying to get their way out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically. No, no, no. Right? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about there? What do you say? Fornication. What are you talking about? In the, old, in the law... What did our law say? If you had a woman, mm -hmm. and if you found out that she wasn't a virgin, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but you were already engaged to her, mm -hmm. but you didn't marry her yet, mm -hmm. then you had the right to disannul the engagement or whatever you was going to do with the woman because she was not a virgin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was two ways that we can handle that thing, right? Oh, right? According to our law, two ways, right? So I bring her in. I'm expecting to get a virgin, right? I bring her in. You know what I'm saying? And then we do our thing. We consummate the marriage. Right? After consummating the marriage, you know what I'm saying, it, we had what was called tokens of virginity. Right? So that's when the, the woman, because it was her first time, you know what I'm saying, she'd make a mess. And then, you know what I'm saying, that the, the parents would keep the mess. Her father. Her father would keep the mess. 
Why would the father keep that mess? To, to prove that she's a virgin. Because at any point after that, once you, you know what I'm saying, do that, marriage consummated. Y'all married. Right? So now after that, if the man come back and he say, you know what? Nah, that wasn't it. You know what I mean? That thing wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? She is doing something before me. That's grounds for divorce. Or if he says it publicly, what happens? Uh, then they have to bring it to the priest. Then the father would have to bring the token of the virginity. And if she was a virgin, uh, I think he'd be beaten, have to pay the father. And, uh, and he got to take care of it. Right. Because he put a bad name on a virgin of Israel. Mm -hmm. But if she wasn't a virgin, what's going on? Uh, then she get put to death. She yeah. get put to death, right? So her butt get put to death if she lying, yeah. right? If he lying, he just get his butt beat and he got to take it. Why does that make sense to us? A lot of people look at that, that's unfair, <laughs> right? It seems unfair, don't know, on the surface, it'd be like, okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, thank you, son, I, I appreciate it. It doesn't say something about the bear false witness. Oh. That's a fact, and that is false witness, but why does it, why is the man treat it differently? Why is the man get to live? He lied about it. Woman though, if she lied about it, her butt dead. Why does that make sense? Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, son. Thank you, son. You can turn on lights. Right? The reason is because the man's punishment is I got to take care of this woman for the rest of my life. Yeah. Right? What I try to do is I try to just get one in real quick and be like, nah, man, you know what I mean? She just wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? And try to get out of there. Oh, oh no, we're not going to do you no service by killing you, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, oh, you thought you were just going to get killed? Plus, she took away, he took away her virginity, so it's like, how can she show her face around here? Exactly. No, now you got to take care of it. Right? Even if she's not your wife. If she don't want to be with you, she ain't got to be with you. Pop can have her go away. But now you still got to pay for it. You got, she got a check for the rest of her life. And he got to do it. Right? That's how we, a lot of the stuff that we look at in the book, it seems unfair. It's because the way the Most High God set it up, a man going to be responsible. Boy, you ain't getting off the hook by dying. What's wrong with you? You lost your darn mind. Ain't nobody putting your butt to that. You better get your butt out there and work. Bring on some darn turkey bacon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know how the people say, turkey darn bacon. You know what I'm saying? Make sure they fed. Pops in there getting paid, like, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. Check came on time this week, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. There you go, baby girl. Right? That's how, our, that's how our culture was. Our culture was the man had to take care of stuff. You know what I mean? The woman would stay with the man, her father, right, until she got married. So her father would have to protect her. Give me that virginity. Give me the token of her virginity. I'm going to protect my baby. That's how it goes. So yeah, I'm giving you my daughter. But if you ever come with that foolishness, I got this. So the man could also handle it a different way. Right? Instead of publicly bringing her out where the pops would have to prove it, he could put her away privately. Right? And he could just give her a bill of what's, what's called a bill of divorcement. That way she doesn't die, but he just divorced her. And this reason is because of uncleanness, the law says, which is fornication. Mm -hmm. So now he find out and be like, oh, are you serious? You slip. You know what? Listen. Here you go. Just go. I ain't, I ain't gonna have you killed. I ain't gonna ruin your name. You just you just go. And they get divorced. Alright? So that's what Yahushua was referring to. He said, the only matter, because that's our law. Our law said you can only give a bill of a door, uh, uh, divorcement for uncleanness. Which is talking about fornication. So then, he's saying, the only way you, the, the only legal way to divorce a person. Alright? Righteous way to divorce a person. Is if they, you were expecting to get a burden. All right, you can't do that thing now, then, you know nah. what I'm saying? That thing, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't expecting to get no version now, day, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, if whatever, for whatever reason, that is the case, you know what I'm saying? You expected to get a version. And you didn't. Call that thing out, and that thing ground for a divorce. Anything outside of that, you stuck. Yeah, today, everybody stuck with what they got, because there wasn't no version around. Right. Right. There might be some version out there. I would like to... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and burn. What verse is that? <laughs> leave that alone. You ain't gonna let nobody lie up here now. You know what I'm saying? And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. All right? So not only the man, like, oh, okay, I'll divorce you. You know what I'm saying? And he go out and try to get him something new. Get him one of them new things. You know what I'm talking about? Guess what happened? Adultery. Then she go out and be like, you know what? 
you know, women, after they get divorced, they always try to travel somewhere. Hell, you know what I'm saying? She go like, Jamaica, come back. Uh-huh, ooh. The, the, uh, adultery with the Mexican that was down there. Why? What a Mexican darn doing in Jamaica? That don't make no darn sense. <laughs> Not a darn Mexican in Jamaica. Take your butt home. Sorry, I think it just made me mad imagining that. Go ahead, keep going. Imagine. <laughs> ain't no way. I ain't got no reason talking about our Mexican in our Jamaica. What if it is Mexican out there? It might be. Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, uh -huh. but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Right? Now understand, our law tells us, swear by his name. Right? Our law says, swear by the name of Yahuwah. Commands us to. Right? It tells us that. Y'all, she would come around. He say, "Look, let me help you out. Don't swear at all, right? Book say you can do it. Don't do it at all. Why? Cause that's more. What if I? Okay, I say, man, I swear before Yahuwah, I am gonna go out there and do this, that, thing, and the other, right? So I swore before his name. Then something happens. I just couldn't fulfill that promise. I swear. That leaves me as a sinner. Yeah, Solomon said uh, it's better not to do it anyway." The proverb. Right? But now if I say, I'm just going to do this, that, and the other, and I don't do it, right? Now there's less weight. It's like, what? If you're going to do it, then just do it. If you're not going to do it, then don't say you're going to do it. Why you got to swear? What's swearing going to change the fact that you're going to do it or not? If I just say, hey, I'm about to go do this, and then I say, hey, I swear I'm about to go do this, does that change my ability to do it? No. Not unless I'm relying on the fear of that swear. And that's why you say anything else. Go ahead, what? Read it. Neither shall you guys swear by thy head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Mm -hmm. But let your communication be yes or no, mm -hmm. for whatsoever is more than these comes of evil. All right, you said anything go, all that extra stuff, man, that thing come from evil. Right, he trying to teach us. Listen, it's a lot of stuff we can do. Be perfect. Right, watch this. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that ye... You resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. All right. So what's going to happen, right? Naturally, somebody hits you, what you want to do? You hit their butt back. Right? Our law say eye for an eye, two for a tooth. He's saying, no, 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 be perfect. If they hit you, guess what you do? Give them the other cheek. Right? Because our natural instinct is to get them back. So he said, instead of doing that, do the opposite of that. Because that's safe for you. Sure, it puts you in a bad position. Now you got punched twice. Okay, for sure. But it puts you in a safe position with him. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever shall compel, and whosoever shall compare thee to go a mile, go with him too. Mm -hmm. Give to him that acts of thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Mm -hmm. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Mm -hmm. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. That, that ye may be what? The children of your Father which is in heaven. Okay, watch this. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Uh huh. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Right. Not even publicans the same? Uh-huh. And if ye you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Mm -hmm. Do not even the publicans so? Yeah. Be ye therefore perfect. He said, be ye therefore what? Perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So now when we go back to 1 John chapter 4, verse uh, 18. Exactly. Nobody's perfect, Tobin. Right? When we, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you go back to 1 John chapter 4, chapter uh, verse 18. He tells us very clearly. He's trying to let us know that we have an opportunity to have cast out all fear by being what? Perfect. Yahushua tells us how to be perfect. We see in his description of perfection, we're as far away as, uh, as possible from committing the sin. Right? Instead of, I mean, instead of putting myself in a position like, okay, if he hit me, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to push him or I'm going to grab him or I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to, instead of doing that, guess what I say to myself? If he hit me, I'm just going to give him my other cheek. 
I'm putting myself at the furthest state that I could away from having vengeance. Right? That's perfection. And when you do that, you have no fear. It casts out all the fear. Because my mindset is, no matter what, I'm a servant most like God. Right? That's the perfect love that we have to have. Right? For perfect. Is it a requirement to be perfect? No. No. That's the, those, a lot of people look at that. Those are the commandments of Jesus. No. What Yahushua is trying to tell you there is, let me show you how to be perfect. He tells you at the very end, be ye therefore perfect. Right? We ain't got to get it. But if, if you go to the young man and ask the man, what commandments do I have to do, you know what I'm saying, to make it into the kingdom? Right? You remember he asked that question? What commandments I got to do to make it into the kingdom? He was like, oh, well, you know, don't lie, you don't commit adultery, don't, you know what I'm saying, this, you know what I'm saying? He went through, he went through some of the commandments, right? Then look what the boy said. I kept all those since my youth. I was like, I've been doing that. He told y'all, sure, oh, that's easy money. What you talking about? I've been doing that. You know what I'm saying? He looked y'all, sure, right? Y'all just like that man. He looking right now. Oh, okay, no, that's good. No, money. We good. And you know he wasn't a liar because y'all sure would have called him out. He would have called him out. Yeah, He's like, no, I've been doing that. That's easy money. The scripture money. said y'all sure looked at him and loved him. Right? But he looked at him. He said, you know what? What did he say, T? What's the next thing he said? What else do I like? Oh, no, yeah, that's the boy said. Yeah, the boy said, okay, you know, I've been to that. Because that was easy money for the boy. Right? For you to, for somebody to give you, okay, this is what you got to do. And you come back and be like, no, nah, I've been doing that since I was a boy. Now, what else? Like, give me more. You know what I'm saying? It be feeling like, you know how you feel like, like, you know what I'm saying? Some of us, we feel like, I'm just not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I feel, but I'm just. I just feel like I'm not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? My spirit, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe it's more that God want me to do out here. You know, you know what I'm saying? We all feel that, that way like at some point, right? But we not sinning, right? That's how he felt at that moment. He was like, oh, oh, well, that's normal. Like it's not always him. Like what, like, what else? What else do I lack? What y'all should respond with him with? He said, go sell your stuff and follow me. No, no, no. What did he say before that? What? What did he say before that? Before he told him to sell his stuff? I don't know. Oh, now we gotta get it. Where's that? <laughs> Dan, you might have to help us out. I want to say it's like a chapter 18, but I couldn't tell you what gospel. Luke. It's Luke 18? Luke something. I don't know. It's Luke 18? This is Matthew also, but I don't think Matthew says the part where Yahshua loved him. Uh, yeah, that's one thing. What verse? Okay, Luke 18. It's, oh, it is Luke 18. Okay, so Luke chapter 18, what up? Verse 21, he said, And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Uh-huh. Now Yahushua heard these things and said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Uh-huh. Sell all that you have and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. All right. Um, look, check the, check the, the. Matthew 1. Yeah. They should give it to you in the thing, right? Yeah. All right. Watch this. That ain't the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for this other one. Uh, it's Matthew what? Uh, I think 19, 21. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, I think. That's what I want. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 20. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 20. Watch this. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. All right? He said, I've been doing this. And Yahshua said unto him, If you will be perfect. He said, If you will what? If you want to be perfect. If you want to what? Be perfect. All right, look. What? What? Go back. You got to go back to this question. What was his original question to Yahushua? And he said unto him, why call? Wait, oh, sorry. And behold, one came and said unto him, "Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life?" His question was very specific. I want eternal life. Y'all, she was answer. And he said unto him, "Why call it me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And mm -hmm. if you will to enter into life, keep the commandments." Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, "Which? Which one? Okay, keep the commandments. Okay, which commandments do I have to keep? All of them?" <laughs> Y'all, she was like, "Okay, let me give you, let me give you some specifics." Let's see which. said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. 
Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right? What else did he say after that? And the young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So he told him, Question, how do you make it into the kingdom? Keep the commandments. Which commandments? Oh, these commandments. Okay, I've been doing that. That's That that original question is done. We, You know how to make it into the kingdom. Keep those commandments that I just gave you. Right? Now it's a new question. Right? He's saying, well, I've been doing that since I was young. What do I lack? Like, what else is there? Y'all should sure respond to him and say, what? Thou will be perfect. Go and sell all. The, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. Why is that important to us? Perfect. It separates it. It lets you know that there's a diff difference between being in the kingdom mm -hmm. and being perfect. That's the idea of being least in the kingdom and great in the kingdom. Right? There's a difference. There's a span there. Right? A lot of times we don't we don't we don't acknowledge that or we don't see that or people don't teach it that way. But we have to understand there is a difference. Yahushua was not asking or requiring everybody to be perfect. He just right, make it in. If you gotta be least, you gotta be least. Just make it in. How you make it in? Keep the commandments. You gotta repent. Gotta repent, right? Only ain't no way to get in. You gotta repent. After you get done with that, okay, now we can talk. Right now we can figure out where you land out. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna be a top creme de la creme. You know what I'm saying? Or you gonna be in the corner somewhere? You know what I'm saying? We gonna figure it out. Either way, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get in by doing, you know, the commandments. All right. I think I got that. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do Judges chapter 17. Let's see if we can pick up. We technically skipped a week. So we're gonna go to Judges chapter 17. I like Judges 17. 17 and 18. I like both of these. 17. 17, good. pretty yes. short. But I like this. Because the reason why I like 17 is because it yeah. demonstrates for us, like, it demonstrates, it just feels so real. You know what I'm saying? It feels, or, nah, I don't want to say real. It feels, it feels just like today to me. All right? It feels the same way that people are acting today. And this is like one of those places where I can easily go and point things out and show people, like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all think what y'all doing is okay, and y'all think what y'all how y'all worship is okay, and y'all think y'all interpret the Bible, you know what I'm saying, the right way. But there were people in the time past that really served God and really worshiped God in their mind and was doing it absolutely against the word. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things that you can get people to read and they can say, Oh, I am worshiping him wrong. Right? I am, I am bowing down to this cross. Right? I do have idols. Right, and we kind of look at that, and it's just like, oh, yeah, I know you have been told your whole life that the Christian cross is the, you know what I'm saying, that's that's perfectly fine, and you know what I'm saying, it's good. You've been told all your life, like, when you get into a scary moment, and you're about to do something, you just, you know, whatever they be doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've been told all that, like, that's important, and you do that. No, bro. Right? No. Let's let's clean it up. Let's try to figure it out. So this is Judges 17. Let me see what you're, let me see what we're talking about here. This is Judges chapter 17, verse 1. It's Judges chapter 17, verse 1. Okay. Put that down. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. Okay. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you, about which you cursed and spoke of also in my ears, behold, the silver is with me. All right? So let's understand what's happening right now. Son comes to mom. He said, Ma, you've been cussing and screaming about this eleven hundred shekels. Right, you've been you've been you've been yelling at everybody about your money. He said, "What now?" It's with me. Oh, I had it. I took your money, mom. Right? He told his mom, he's "Like, listen, you've been cussing and screaming about this money. All right, let me just come clean. I took the money. Watch what mom say. You know, you know, you know these women got these spoiled little darn boys. Right? You know what I'm saying? You got these spoiled boys. They know they butt just darn bad. Need a darn whooping." But she look at her cute little boy that she loves so darn much and watch what she said. And his mother said, Blessed be thou the Lord, my son. I mean, he just stole from you. Right? And she said, Blessed be you of the Lord. Why? 
And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son. She said, I was storing it up for you anyway. Right? This was your money anyway. Like, this, like everything about this, with this chapter to me just reminds me of how we are just today. Like, today you have mothers that are like that. Their kid do something bad. They whole heart is to their kid. They, everything they do is for their kid, right? And so their kid do something bad, take something that was really already there, but the kid didn't know it was there. They just wanted it. And then the mom just was like, you know what? That was for you anyway. Oh, my cute little boy. Because they love their kid so much, right? But watch this. To make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto you. So she had the shekels of silver so she could make an idol for the boy. Watch this. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a, gra a graven image and a molten image, and of they what? were in the house of Micah. Okay, keep going. And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Mm -hmm. In those days there was no king in Israel. But every man did that which was right in his own eyes. All right? That's very important. In those days, it was nobody to be like, oh, look, this is how it's supposed to be done. So everybody had to go figure it out. So everybody just started doing it however. Exactly how we are today. Right? Everybody just doing whatever they think right. Right? Whatever, whatever comes to their darn heart, they be like, look, you know what? This is how I'm going to do it. This is how it should be done. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city of Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. Uh -huh. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. Uh -huh. And Micah said unto him, Where are you coming from? Uh -huh. And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. All right, so this is a Levite. Watch this. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me. And be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year in a suit of apparel and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. Does any of this line up with our law? No. None of this lined up with our law. He paying the man to be a personal priest to him. None of this lined up with the law. But guess what? He's a priest of who? This guy. He's a priest of Yah, is what he's trying to be. Right? So he has his idol. And so far, we looking like, okay, he just worshiping some false god. But then he get a priest, a Levite, a priest of the Most High God. Let's see what he trying to do. He didn't say he was a priest. He just said he was a Levite. Oh, yeah, a Levite. And try to make him a priest of the Most High God, right? Let's see. Watch this. Oh, wow. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. Mm -hmm. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Mm -hmm. Then said Micah, Now I know that Yahuwah will do me good. Now I know who? Yahuwah, the Lord. So now he got this idol, and he made this Levite a priest, right? Uh, immediately we start thinking, oh, say he worshiped some other god. No. He worshiped Yahuwah. Right? So when we see Christians, and they, you know what I'm saying, they got their cross, or they got their praying hands, or the fish, or the dove, and all the stuff that we always talk about, right? They have all these things, and in their mind, they worship in the Most High God. It's like, no, no, no. Don't make a mistake. This has happened before. We've been in a place where we got idols and stuff we ain't got no business having, and we think we're worshiping the Most High God, right? It's important that we're able to identify just because it feels good, right? Just because it, you know what I'm saying, it seemed right. Just because some people told us it was all right. That don't mean that you can continue worshiping that way, right? Keep going. Seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Mm hmm. Ah. And it's next chapter. What's the next chapter? Uh, read that last verse again. Then said Micah, Now I know that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Right? Now I know Yahuwah will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to, the, to my priest. Right? So he's just doing whatever he wanted. The book already told you. No king in the land. Everybody was just doing whatever they want to do at that point. Right? People just doing their mind, their own business, doing whatever they want to do. Mom sitting there like, yeah, oh, my son, I, I put this aside for you. I was going to make you an idol with it. She go pay the you know, 200 to the founder. Okay, go ahead and use the rest. Go ahead and mold you a little idol. Here you go. Son, get excited. He finally got him an idol. Guess what I'm going to do now? Make an ephod. Let me give me an ephod. Which only the priest is supposed to wear. Right? Oh, 
look, I happen to find a priest. He's coming from Bethlehem. A Levite. Right? Oh, right, yes, oh, right, yeah. But in his mind, he found him a priest. Not a right? son of Aaron, he didn't say. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You just got a regular old Levite. Son of Aaron got to be a priest. But in his mind, close enough. Found myself a priest. I'll give you some money. I'll pay you this every year. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is, you know what I'm saying, be a priest for me. Levi just is reprobate. He said, okay. Mm. Right? Yeah, sound like a good deal. Right? That's the mind that we have. Just like the people, you know what I'm saying, Danielle going back and forth with, you know what I'm saying? She is, they sitting there talking about the Holy Spirit is a darn woman. Because wow. that's, that's the mind that we have. Because what we look at is somebody told them something. Some stuff then got passed down. Right? They didn't misinterpret it's a mess. Somewhere, uh, give me, give me, uh, give me Proverbs eight. Give me Proverbs chapter eight. Cause I mean, it's there. You can look at, you look at the book. I just like being fair, right? I'm never gonna try to see over here. It may seem like I bully and pick on these people a lot and all that when I'm up here, but at the end of the day, I'm always fair with it. At least I like to believe I am. I like to believe that, you know, what I'm saying we go to the book. According to what they think they see in the book, and I give them a fair shot. I always, I always try to read the Bible verses that they would use to defend their position, and I say, okay, you know what? This is where they went wrong. Because otherwise, if I'm just like, if I'm just like, just talking about our position, and we not identifying where other people went wrong, what do we learn from that? That leaves us vulnerable. Every one of us vulnerable to just walk out there and get the same thing wrong. I want to expose y'all to where they went wrong, right? Let's look at all the, let's look at all the evidence. Right? Bring me your best argument. And let me show you where you went wrong in that argument. And let me teach it to my people. So that they can avoid that error. Right? So when we look at it, they go to Proverbs chapter 8. Right? Go to Proverbs chapter 8. They also go to uh, outside in the Apocrypha. Remember the guy kept on telling you, know, just check the Apocrypha. You notice he ain't quoted? Yeah. We, he got, I mean, if he got it, if he got it, go ahead and lay it on me. Oh, yep. They just want you to give them the answer. The scripture say, search it for yourself day mm -hmm. and night. No, same dude. Where to look. Same, same dude posting scriptures in the in the same group. Right? He gonna say, in this situation, no, nah, you just you just search it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it'll be satisfying. <laughs> right? Same group. He like people. Wow, wow. Hit him with scripture when he know he right. You know what I'm saying? He'll write with some of them things. Wow, wow. Slap him with them things. I'm like, okay, that thing real convenient. You know what I'm saying? That ain't real convenient. I'm just looking at him. I've been waiting for him to ask me something. I, I, I just wonder. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to pick no fight with him. That thing ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? I see Dan. Yeah, I want to sharpen my sword too. What you talking about? I want to get up there. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? But you, at the end of the day, the man, what the man was trying to say was, it's in the apocrypha. I know what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, it's in there. I'm waiting for him to post. Like, go ahead and throw it. Lay it on us. You know what I'm saying? Because I know what that thing. I like it better in the apocrypha. Look. What it say about wisdom in the apocrypha? I line that thing all the way up with y'all sure from the apocrypha. You know I like I like to make that thing line up with y'all sure. What it say in the apocrypha? I'll be like, oh yeah, let me show y'all some stuff. You right? Oh, I wish I had the you know what I'm I wish I had the apocrypha we could read from it. You know what I'm I probably could pull it up. I don't know, Dan. You know what I'm saying? See if you can give me um see if you can look up Sirach. I think it's S-I-R-A-C-H. 24. I think that's what it is. It might be 24. I mean, I just want to see. If that's not it, you know what I'm saying? Just tell me what the first verse says. It should say something about wisdom. wisdom, right? Yeah, wisdom being a woman. Oh, yeah. Wisdom shall praise her own self. Go ahead and read that for me if you don't mind. Wisdom shall praise her own self and uh -huh. shall be honored in God and shall glory in the midst of her people. Uh-huh. Shall open her mouth in the churches of the Most High, and shall glorify herself in spite of his of his power. Uh huh. And in the midst of her own people shall she be exalted, and shall be admired in holy assembly. Keep going. Mm -hmm. And in the multitude, and in the multitude of, of the elect, she shall have praise, and among the blessed, she shall be blessed, saying, "I came out of the mouth of the Most High." She said, "I came where." So she said, I came out of the mouth of the most high. That sounds like what? Because, yeah, I mean, if you come out of the mouth of the most high, what are you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
No, I mean literally, what are you? The word. 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 Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I remember John chapter 1. I remember saying something like in the beginning was what? The word. And the word was what? The word was God. Keep reading. Let me see what else we got there now. Let, let me tell you something. Give me some rock. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about P. Diddy now. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and give me some rock. I'll light your butt up. Wisdom is a woman? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about it then. All right? Keep going. Watch this. I'll light they butt up. Apocrypha, nupopra. What you want? Bring it on. You know what I'm saying? I'll light y'all. They don't know no darn book. These people don't know the book. How you gonna know the book? You ain't even got the basic scriptures. I'm iffy on some of them apart. Some of them line up now. Some of them, you know what I'm saying? The ones, the wisdom of Solomon, that's a, that thing line up. So rock, that thing from what I read, I ain't read all that thing, but from what I read, that thing line up. I like it. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with some of it. Some of them a little, yeah, I mean, okay. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't rolling with everything. Good for history. You know what I'm saying? I ain't rolling with everything. I told you, I, I told you one day, I was like, you know what I'm saying? The Apocrypha. Um, I always forget to correct this with you, but I, I told you one day. That the apocrypha was not in what, what was called the Septuagint. That was my error, right? The apocrypha was in the Septuagint. You know what I'm saying? It's just that the Septuagint contained history. You know what I'm saying? Those books to me are good for history, not necessarily good for doctrine. Not all of them, at least. Um, so it's not that these books are or don't have any historical value or anything like that. They do have value, and it's a reason why people read them. It's just not something I would go to to teach people how to, how to enter into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right or or teach people, you know what I'm saying, to, to extrapolate on what Moses already laid down or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But watch it, keep on reading. I'll, I'll be arguing with some of them, and they be like, when we argue about the law, they say, well, you never read the apocrypha, so you don't know. And I'm like, but I got the books of Moses. If we talking about the law, so is the apocrypha saying something that Moses forgot? But they never really. Nah, know. they can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he told me to go to was it the Torah? Mm -hmm. That's law. That's 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 the same as saying the books. Of, so that's like the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just Torah. Torah in Hebrew means law. It's Instruction. Fancy, fancy right. way to like, it's a whole different book, though, right? No, nah, nah, the same book. Genesis to Deuteronomy. That's what oh, okay. Yeah. So well, I thought he was telling me I need to go buy some. It's books stuff you already read already. Like, and yeah. I was thinking he was talking about. I think, I think he was talking about the Quran. That's all I was like. They just try to yeah, get you. Don't, fancy. Don't, let them, don't let them back you all. That's how they get you. you know they make it sound fancy. Yeah, don't let, don't let them back you all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Don't let them back you all. I like sure the, didn't think he was talking about some other books. I was like, well, I need that. I got this whole book right here. I like when he exactly. Christian be hitting that's, you with that's the... That's my thing. This like, is, you know, this is the mosaic eschatological. You know what I'm saying? When they Christians are talking like that. You know what I'm saying? You just got to take your time. Sometimes I be listening to them and be like... What are you talking about? Do you believe in the Christian I mean, study? Sometimes we be looking at Tim. Me and, me and Tim be looking at him. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> we just stick right to the word. Well, Genesis chapter 13. You know what I'm saying? Is that enough? Because you know what I'm saying? They, they, they say some stuff trying to back you off of what you're talking about. At the end of the day, they talking about the same book or they not talking about the book. Either way, I'm going to light your butt up. you talking about the book. you got to line up with what we talking about because we line up with God. you not talking about the book. I'm going to light your butt up because you ain't talking about the book. You know what I'm saying? So don't let these people back, back you off what you're talking about. You just ask them. Torah, what you mean by that? What do you mean by it? Then they gonna try to front out, oh, you don't even know what the Torah is. Oh, see, I can't even, that's what they try to do. I can't even talk to you. I'm asking you what you mean by it, though. Obviously, I'm talking about the first five books of the Bible. Okay, cool. Now let's talk. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, let's, let's, let's get all this other stuff out the way. Let's talk now. Right. You know, you know what, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, we know what we're talking about. Let's talk. But you know what I'm saying? Don't let these people back you up. Uh, where we at? Keep reading. Watch it. She said, I came out of the, the most high mouth. Watch what she did. Uh, the, the firstborn, the she was what? <laughs> before all creatures. Oh my goodness. I can't think of anybody else. Because I could have swore Yahushua is the firstborn. Uh, okay, may I don't know. Let's see what else. <laughs> I made that in the heavens there should rise light that never fell. What? She? What? She made what? I made that in the heavens there should rise light that never fell. So she said, "Let there be light." <laughs> That's crazy. Wisdom is a bad girl, right? Keep going. Mm. I 
dwelt in the highest places, and my throne is in a pillar of a cloud. Right? So we can stop there. You know what I'm saying? But you see, she describing herself. Wisdom is. This lady. Just describing herself. And guess who she testify of? Yeah, was sure. Whole book gonna tie up to her, even when it's not in the book. Wisdom is justified by her children. Right? Even when it's not in the book. Whole book tie up to her. So, I mean, let's just say, let's just say, because the point that they trying to make is wisdom is what? The feminine aspect of God. The feminine aspect the Holy Spirit. Wow. They want. They want you to believe. Even, a woman wasn't even created until he took him out of Adam. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't got to tell these people nothing. <laughs> yeah. These people don't know what they're talking about. It's like I will make him a helper. Like if that was the case, if it was a woman, like he said, I created. Like, you know they're gonna get the hang up in. In chapter one of Genesis, he said he created them man in his image, male and female. Right. So they were like, "Let's see, all these women." God got a female part of him somewhere, so that's how he was able to make them male and female, right? But we know chapter one is like it's like an overall, like it just kind of gives you an overall, like this is everything that happened. Then it goes into detail. Then it goes into detail in the chapter two. So chapter two, who did he make? Adam. Adam. Did he make Eve? No. No. Then he made Eve from who? Adam. So Eve was actually in the image of Adam, yeah. right? Adam was in the image of God. So in the generation, right, in the, like in the genealogy of it all, male and female were made in his image. But in actuality, female was made from the image of male. Male was made from the image of God. Right? They don't get them details, though. But you know what? Let's let them have it. Right? Let's let them have it. Wisdom, obviously, is Yahushua. Obviously, is Yahushua must be a girl then. Right? Is that what they're trying to say? They gonna call it when they think it's the Holy Spirit. They gonna call Holy Spirit a girl. They gonna run their mouth against the Holy Spirit and call the Holy Holy Spirit a girl, right? When they think it's the Holy Spirit, I will prove to you that y'all sure. So now what? He a girl? Somebody gotta deal with this stuff. Somebody gotta make sense of it for me, cause I just I mean help me out with it. But let's get to the real stuff, right? Let's get to the real stuff. I'm gonna tell you, wisdom ain't y'all sure. Wisdom ain't the Holy Spirit. Wisdom ain't none of that. Wisdom is just a darn quality. Right? Wisdom is what it is. Just like understanding. You gonna give a gender to understanding too? Right? Give me Jeremiah. This is me cheating, y'all. What are you looking for? Uh, Jeremiah. Uh, I think it's Jeremiah 3. What do you say? Um, he said, uh, What's today? 21st? Man, no 21st. I went to the wrong one. 28th is what I'm looking for. Yeah, Jeremiah 3, verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Has thou seen that which back that which backsliding Israel has done? Mm -hmm. She has gone up. She, who? She has gone up. Hold on. Backsliding who? Mm -hmm. Israel. And then what gender is it? She. Oh, that don't make no darn sense. Who's Israel? Israel, Israel was uh, Jacob, a man. Yeah. Jacob? Right. Who named him Israel? Most high. He changed him to a girl when he did that? Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out. because I mean, this is God talking right now, and it just says she. But Israel was a man. Why is Israel being called a, a woman now? Somebody make sense of it for me. Is he talking about the man right now? He's talking about the nation. Mm. Is the nation a person? Not really. No. So now when I'm talking about a land, I characterize it as a woman. When I'm talking about equality, I characterize it as a woman. It's often how we looked at things as Hebrews. When we talked about like humans or entities or gods or spirits and all that, we're talking about them as man. Angel, when you, see, when you see ever see an angel referred to as a woman? Not going to happen, right? Not in the book. These people do it inside of their images and all that. In the book, you will never see an angel. Because anything that is godly, if you're talking about a group of male and females at one time, when have you ever seen where it's a, it very rarely in the book it's going to say uh, the males and the females. Usually it's just going to say them or him. A man. Man. 
it's talking about mankind. Like yeah. it's gonna say just man, mm -hmm. right? It usually it's gonna always represent the male, mm -hmm. right? The whole time. But when you're talking about something that is not actually a human or an entity of in that nature, right? A living entity, then I'm gonna call it a female. When I characterize, when that uh, what's the word? Personify. Personify. You know what I'm saying? Of the writer. You know what I'm saying? You smart. You think of smart Christian stuff. Personify. He a Christian. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you, when you, you know what I'm saying? When you personify something, you gonna make it a woman. You gonna make it a her, right? That's just our nature. That's how we. That's how we roll, yeah. right? That's how we did things. People don't get that because they, they haven't been they haven't been brought into our culture. And how could? So let's not be let's be fair to everybody. How could they? Right? Even our own people. How could they be brought onto our culture? Our stuff been stolen for, mangled, passed around. Given to Gentiles, fed back to us halfway, right? How are we supposed to just get it and be like, okay, no, this was us all along. I get it. No, we got to figure that thing out. But that's where we going wrong, right? That's where we see it and be like, okay, well, wisdom is she. Mm, when the wisdom seem pretty powerful, powerful in the book of Sirach. That's probably just the Holy Spirit. Can't be, right? John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things mm -hmm. and bring all things to your remembrance. So he said he, right? Yep. I got that. I got that. What are you going to do with it? Right? <laughs> He ain't about to confuse it now. He ain't about to be, right. okay, it's a girl. I mean, but it, but it, I mean, really, it's a man. Nah, that's not happening. The, that's these people's stuff. The confusing stuff though. Yeah, that's that's these people. So you know they got some stuff out now. There's some some medication. These people are so abusive to children, man. They got some medication. They mad at me. I'll whoop my kid though. Right? I'll put my hand on my kid. Oh my god, I can't believe it. They got medication that they starting to give kids now to tell them not to go, to have, to stop their puberty puberty for hitting. And then they say the reason why they're trying to stop they, the, the first puberty is so that they can hit their real puberty, the more accurate puberty, right? And they, they suppose that by doing that, people will know their gender better. They'll better align with their gender. I said, these people are making these That's kids gay. Crazy. Yes. That crazy. stuff is sick. I heard that thing on the podcast. I was looking like, this is some sick business. These are some sick people. Some sick, sick, sick people. It's like you created a medication to stop a person from going through puberty. And all of a sudden now, even though we've never heard of it, there's some second puberty that's supposed to be more accurate than the first one. Yeah, that's crazy. These people are sickos. Right? We do that. That's they stuff that do all the sex change and all the, you know what I'm saying, confused about what they are and all that. That's not the most high God. Most high God line that thing straight up. Right? Let's talk about the, the, the let's talk about wisdom. Right? Cause wisdom, what 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 they get at is they want to say God is a spirit, right? We know that from Yahushua. Yahushua himself told us, he said, God is a spirit, therefore he must be worshipped in what? Spirit. Spirit and truth, right? So God is a spirit, we know that. So if God is a spirit, and then we know also that the angels are spirits, right? So angels are spirits. Then if we were to look at um, Isaiah chapter 11, right? And the angels, angels are spirits. We can get that. We don't have to get it. But Psalm 104, if y'all want to look at it for yourself. That's Psalm 104. I think it's about verse 3 or verse 4. You know what I'm saying? The angels being spirit, that's one thing, right? God is a spirit. That's another thing. So now let's talk about, um, let's talk about. Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Mark what the book got to say. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, mm -hmm. and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom. And the spirit hold on, hold on. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So the spirit of Yahuwah shall rest upon him. What's that? It's the most high. 
Holy What's Holy another God. word for it? Holy the, Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Spirit, right? So let's count them. The spirit of Yahuwah shall rest on him. That's one, right? The spirit of wisdom. Then you have the spirit of wisdom. What's that? That's two. And understanding. Understanding three. The spirit of counsel and might. It's counsel, might. That's that. We have five now. The spirit of knowledge. Knowledge. And the spirit of the Lord. And then the last one is what? The spirit of the Lord. How many is that? Seven. So if anybody heard in Revelation when it talked about... The seven spirits of God. So now these are seven separate spirits of God, right? But they try to tell us that wisdom is the Holy Ghost, right? Very first spirit it talks about was what? Spirit of the Lord. That got that. Go ahead and get that theory out of there. You can go ahead and move that theory along. Now, I mean, you can pick another theory after that because these are all spirits. God is a spirit. That was the first one, right? But then you got six other spirits. Of these six other spirits... Now, you can say all of these other spirits are spirits. Maybe they're angels. I'm fine with that. Right? You can say wisdom is an angel. But now, what you got to deal with, if you say wisdom is an angel, and wisdom is an angel that is a woman, what about understanding? What's understanding gender? You know what I'm saying? Why don't, why don't we, why, why are we not exalted understanding or counsel or might? You know what I'm saying? Why nobody talking about these other spirits? You know what I'm saying? What's, why we can't find their gender nowhere? Jumping, just moving too quick. Wow. At the end of the day, you know what we're dealing with? A quality. These are spirits or angels that carry a quality that will give you a quality. The, the, the quality is not a spirit, right? Understanding is not a spirit. There's a spirit of understanding. There's a spirit that carries understanding with it. Be like, yo, I can help you understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even deep. It's always not like, it's, it's just... It really it's regular, simple stuff. And these people be, oh, it's that Shakespeare. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Read. They go, let me tell you what they do. They go to philosophy class. You know what I'm saying? They be looking at Aristotle. So they be trying to, they be looking at this stuff. Be, oh my gosh. Yeah. Wisdom, her. Oh, you know what I'm saying? They make a mess. I be looking like, no, just relax. Like, this is, just calm down. This is regular stuff. Like, deep down, we all know it's just regular stuff. <laughs> right? This ain't even the deep part. This whole a whole bunch of deep stuff in the body. And you want to get here and get stuck on wisdom being a girl? For what? That's fine. Wisdom a girl. Okay, now you take it further. Holy Spirit is a girl. Their argument was if it was Yahweh, I was sure, if the mm. Holy Spirit were men, then the Holy Spirit had to be female because of all of them. He said that if we thought that all were male, then they, they, they are then I am implying that they are gay, or anybody who believes that all of them, wow. that they are gay. Sickles, That's what he right? said. And I said, so you're saying that the Holy Spirit <laughs> and Yah wow. implanted their egg in Mary? Is that what you're trying to say? That so they, like, even if they were gay, gay people can't reproduce. That's what I'm saying. So that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So the Holy Spirit entered into yeah. Mary and created a child. How does that happen? Two women cannot create. Because I was thinking they're just going with carnal mind. You're thinking male, you need male and female to procreate. Okay, it makes, it makes sense in the natural, in the physical. You need male and female. But we ain't talking about that. They did. Yeah, what they do is they dismiss the whole actual story. Yeah. Right? They dismiss the fact, and you, you pointed out correctly. You, you are talking about, in your weird mind, Holy Spirit is a woman, Father is a male, and then they gave birth to the Son. Right, that's how they envision it. But then the actual literature that we read tells you Holy Spirit came over Mary and she gave birth to the son. Mm -hmm. Right? So just like you said, that don't work out. Right? And now Holy Spirit's a woman, Mary a woman. Oh, now we got an issue. According to their carnal mind, just like you said. Right? According to their carnal mind, you got an issue. Because they, they not think about that thing all the way. Right? That thing don't line up. But you know where that come from? We uh, look up Queen of Heaven for me, because I can't think of I can't think of it. Jeremiah 30 something. The one that you told me about? Yeah, you still got it? Yeah. It's a it's a bunch of references. I mean we could pick that thing out. It's a it's a few of them out there. I think they all are in Jeremiah though. Oh yeah, this is Jeremiah. Jeremiah what?
Give me a first. Uh, Jeremiah 7, verse 18. It's Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. I think it is somewhere in 30, though. This is Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. Watch this. I'm going to tell you what these, where these people get it from. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. To what? To the queen of heaven. Keep going. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Mm. Do they provoke Y'all keep running your darn mouth by the Holy Spirit being a woman. I'll tell y'all what y'all trying to do. Wow. Right? What y'all trying to do is make the Holy Spirit the queen of heaven. It's not nothing. It's nothing new for us. We've been doing this for We've been doing this foolishness. I mean, because you just think about it. Okay, God is a man. I mean, I'm a man. I got a wife. I mean, you just you just get the yeah. book just told book just told you God is what? Spirit. Spirit. And then that's why also, is you putting our our silly stuff on him? That's also implying that Yahushua was created at that moment with Mary when he says I was there in the beginning. You people make a darn mess. All right? Make a darn mess. Like return to me the glory that I once was. We read it today, right? What we read about the spirit? We ain't got to get it. Y'all read it today, though. Spirit is spirit. Natural man can't understand the things. The natural spirit. man can't understand no spiritual stuff? Yeah. When this stuff be spiritual and your buddy darn natural, that they ain't put on lockers right your whole mind ignore everything spiritual when you in your flesh that's the danger right that's why we got to keep ourselves spiritually minded gotta shut that stuff down quick too you know what i'm saying like okay no get that out of there get that out of there too quick mm -hmm. right so that the spirit can guide us right otherwise we put ourselves in a position where it's just like oh we just living off pure desire right it hurts it ain't hurt you know what I'm saying? Most high God gotta, you know what I'm saying? Get in there, clean that stuff up. Wrench your butt down a little bit. Spin you up, you know what I mean? Spin you out, spit you out. That thing hurt though. Where we at? Do they provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, mm -hmm. upon man and upon beasts and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. And this is what these people want, right? They want to talk to us about the Holy Spirit being a woman. It's, it's just like what we just read in Judges. They get idols. They make their own priests. They make their own doctrine. Make their own pastors. Make their own rules. Make their own everything. Right? They just go with it. Can't nobody tell them nothing. Everybody do what's right in their own eyes. Everybody does what's right in their own eyes. You know what that means? They do what they want to do. Do what they think is right. They do what they think is right. They're not going nowhere for any source. What does that look like in 2018 going into 2019? What does everybody look does what's right in their own life? What does that look like to us? It might be like somebody would be like, well, I don't do religion. I'm just spiritual. Yeah. It might look like somebody would be like, you know what? Only God can judge me. I mean, God, I just believe that God is connecting to me from the universe. <laughs> Wait, Eli. She need a whooping? He's about talking now, ain't he? He be trying to put together, not just sentences, he putting together paragraphs in this thing. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? Doing good. He already talked about it. And then, uh, what was his name? TJ. Yeah, TJ did. <laughs> TJ talked terrible. Yeah, that thing is hilarious. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's, jump, let's jump back into 18. Let's finish up 18 we get up out of here. I was gonna wait and hold off 18 for next week, but no, I like 18. You got it. Yeah, boy, I was about to put tips on there. We ain't got to do a whole lot of jumping around with 17 and 18. Your things just flat out there it is. We can just read them things. It's Judges chapter 18, verse 1. Sit 
All right, so now you yeah. have you have huh? <laughs> you boy, you give it down to the blues, bro. Yeah, it's bad, but you got uh you got Micah. You know what I'm saying? Micah's in position that he just got his Levite priest. You know what I'm saying? He got his idol, got an ephod. He got he got it. He happy. He just got his whole house set up the way he want to with his sin himself, right? And watch this. In those days, there was no king in Israel, and in those days, the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. All right, so Danites are our brother, right? That's one of the tribes of Israel, right? So they were still looking for you. Remember, at the beginning of Judges, y'all might not remember, beginning of Judges, we talked about not everybody conquered their land, and the Most High God was mad about that thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? He told us, go in there, get your land, don't make no deals with these people. Not everybody did what they're supposed to do. Some people were scared. Dan was one of them. Right? Dan never did actually go and capture their land all the way. So now Dan is looking on certain tribe, uh, certain families within Dan, they walking around trying to figure out, like, you know what I'm saying, where are we going to stay? Certain people in Dan got some land, some people don't. The whole tribe didn't stick together. So watch this. Well, until that day, all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. Uh huh. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coast, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtaol. When the book say men of valor, what does that mean? I mean, they can scrap. Yeah, them boys yeah, with it. You know what I'm saying? That thing say, let me tell you something. You hear that book say men of valor? I mean, them boys with it at that point. Like, well, what you talking about? Boy, you know what I'm saying? I'll knock you out. That's what you talking about. That thing say men of valor. That's like how we even now. He's gangster. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what they was. Let's talk about these gangsters here. Let's see. From Zora and from Eshtayal to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, go search the land who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. Mm -hmm. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite, and they turned in there and said unto him, Who brought you here? And what and what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and has hired me, and I am his priest. So when they say thus and thus, it's just giving you a short, like, you know what I'm saying? He explained the whole situation to him. You know what I'm saying? It just didn't re-explain it for you. It just said thus and thus. Right? See, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, you know what I'm saying? I came to Micah, you know what I'm saying? He paid me this much a year, gave me an ephod, told me to be his priest. Now, I'm a Levite, you know, I'm from, from Bethlehem. I'm just trying to come through, try to figure out what's happening around here. Right? Keep going. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether mm, our way which we Hold on, know, I ain't think about that thing. Let's look at this. You got a Levite from Bethlehem. Who's not a son of Aaron. I didn't say that. That's Ooh. not a son of Aaron. Who that test file? Yahushua. Yahushua, hold on. Yahushua came from Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Came on the scene and somehow ended up being what? <laughs> Whole book talk about the darn man. You know what I'm saying? That thing, I love that thing. You know what I'm saying? You catch that thing on the darn fly. I look like Bethlehem pre. Wait a darn <laughs> second. The whole book talk about the man. What's this? What's, what's the Levi name? Did it give us his name? I don't think so. He just said a Levite. Mm -hmm. All right, I gotta remember that thing. I might have to note, note that thing. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I appreciate the Lord. Keep going. As counsel, we pray thee of God that we may know whether our way which we shall go be prosperous. Uh huh. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace. Before the Lord is your way wherein you go. Mm -hmm. Then the five men departed and came to Laish and saw the people that were there, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. Mm -hmm. And there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. Mm -hmm. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. Alright, so essentially what's happening here is Danites ran into this Levite who was the priest for uh, Micah. When they ran into him, they are like, oh, you a priest. Okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Let us know, you know what I'm saying? Go talk to God for it. Let us know if we can take this land. They still trying to get their land. Let us know if we can take this land over there. Priest was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? God said y'all got it. Wow. <laughs> right? Priest, priest like, no, nah, you good. Go ahead. Go do that. <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, go ahead. So they go up there, and when they go up there, what they see? Oh, this us all day. You know what I'm saying? They look at the people sleep. They ain't even paying attention. Oh, yeah, we about to, we about to light this up. So now they think about this priest. They like, oh, he got it. Right? He got the most high God with him. Right? Watch it. Tell me this ain't us today. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Pastor going to tell you, your breakthrough is coming. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hit you with that darn breakthrough. The, the next week they hit you back with that job. You be like, oh, you a member of that church for darn life. You, you've been fired seven darn times sitting in that church. 
But guess what? You ain't gonna never forget that first job. Right? Keep going. And they came to their brother in Azora and Eshtaol, and their brother said unto them, What say ye? Mm -hmm. And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good, and they are still, and, mm -hmm. are, and, are, and are ye still. Mm -hmm. Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. Mm -hmm. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure in a large land, for God has given it into your hands. A Priest, lighten their butt up right now. Watch this. A place where there is no one of anything that is in the earth. Mm -hmm. And there went from and there went from thence of the family of the Danites out of Zora and out of Eshtaol, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. Mm -hmm. And they went up and pitched in Kiriath Jerim mm -hmm. in Judah. Wherefore they called that place Mahana Dan unto this day. Mm -hmm. Behold, it is behind Kiriath Jerim. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went out to spy the country of Laish and said unto their brethren, Do you know that there is in these houses an ephod, a teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Mm -hmm. Now therefore consider what you have, what you have to do. And they, <laughs> and they turned thitherward and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. So... Y'all understand what's happening right now, right? Yeah. You have, you had these men that went up. They trying to get this land. Did they already take the land? No. No. So they haven't took the land yet. The priest had told them that they could take the land. Hyped them up. They said, "Okay, you gonna be our priest now." So the priest go back home. And he like, "Well, you know what you gotta do because all my equipment is inside this house." Six hundred of them boy came out. They stood at the entrance like, "Yo, what's happening?" You know what I mean? Six hundred of them boy. Micah by himself, he ain't really by himself, but you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, Micah, he ain't got 600, not, 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 not men of valor, you know what I'm talking about, Micah might have some, you know what I'm saying, a couple little boys, you know what I'm saying, but not no men of valor, watch how this thing happened. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in there and took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and mm -hmm. the molten image and the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the 600 men that were appointed with weapons of war. So now the priest, he didn't completely switched up, they stole all his equipment. And he just standing there, like, all right. So six of them went in there, stole all the equipment, and they come back. Let's see what else happened. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod, the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be the priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? Let me translate that for y'all. All right, so the priest, he was like, hold on, hold on, what y'all doing? Right? Dan said, what did he say, hold thy peace? Yeah, shut up. Okay, Dan said, shut up. All right, then I'm like, hold on, shut up. <laughs> you might, you might want to relax, shut up. Would you rather be a priest for this man, or you can be a priest for the whole nation? Like, what you talking about? It's the entire tribe, tribe right here. Tribe. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We'll hit you, you know what I'm saying? We, we'll set you up. Like, you'll be set for life. He gonna give you how much? Okay, imagine getting that from 600 people. Or even more when we take you to the whole group. You know what I'm saying? So they like, huh? What the priest gonna say? Yeah, the priest's heart was glad and he took the e That boy said, oh, that's a good point. He said, oh, give me that E5. He, the priest said, book said his heart was glad. He looked at he said, oh, cha-ching. You know what I'm saying? He said, oh, I tell y'all, y'all can take whatever land y'all need to take. Like, what's happening? Right? Let's hear about it. I love he this took thing. took the ephod and the teraphim and the grave and image and went into the midst of the people. So they turned and departed and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. Mm -hmm. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's house were gathered together. Right. And overtook the children of Dan. Right. So now all the people of that town came together trying to scrap for Micah. Remember, they going to get some men of valor. They not going to, they going to get some bad fellas. You know what I'm saying? So they come together and they overtook them. When they say overtook them, just mean they caught up to them. You know what I'm saying? Like they chased him and they caught up to him like, hey, 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 what's happening? Right? So let's hear about what happened. And they cried unto the children of Dan. They did what? They cried unto the children of Dan. They cried unto him like, yo, why y'all, you know what I mean? Like, why y'all take our stuff? Let's hear about it. And they turned their faces and said unto Micah, what aileth thee? Right? So listen, touch the, the Danites, hold on. The Danites, after, after they cried like, hey, yo, yo, why y'all take our stuff? Danites did what? They turned their faces? They turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee? 
What's the problem? I just want to translate. What's, wrong with you? what's the problem? You know what I'm saying? What LSD? They turned around and was like, yo, what, what's the problem? What's good? You alright? When you say, all right, when I ask you what LSD, like what's, what am I asking? Yeah, yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, what's the problem? What's wrong with you? So now you got put, to put some aggression behind that thing. What? You all right? You okay? What's wrong with you? Right? Then boy turn around, look at it. Okay, what else happened after that? That you come up, that you come with such a company. He said, you must be out your darn mind to come right up on there with all these people. <laughs> what's wrong with you? Like, what's are you? Are you sick? What hell is he? Let's hear about it. And he said, "Ye have taken away my gods, which I made, and the priest, and ye are gone away. And what I have, and what have I more?" Right. So Michael was like, "Yeah, you took all my stuff." Michael trying to talk it out. He don't know. Michael don't realize D boy ain't about a whole lot of talking. You know what I'm saying? Michael, Michael trying to talk. He's like, "Look, no, no, man, y'all took y'all took my stuff." You know what I'm saying? What else I got? Let's hear about it. And what is this that you say to me, whatever it be? Right? You know what's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Why are you going to ask me that crazy question? You see, you took my stuff. How you going to take my stuff to ask me what's wrong? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tripping. You know how somebody make you feel like you tripping? You know what I'm saying? Be like, no, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? You took my stuff. What you mean? Of course I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? So he's looking at, you know, Micah, he's still trying to have a conversation. Or the boy say to him. And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee. And thou lose thy life with the lives of your household. <laughs> These boys, he's a bad boy. Oh yeah, that boy said, listen, you might want to quiet down. You might want to pipe down. For one of these bad boys right here, go over there and knock your butt out. <laughs> you mess around, just lose your darn life. I mean, you doing a whole lot of talking right now. You might want to shut up. Because one of these boys right here, they might get upset. I'm trying to tell you, these boys are gangsters. All right, watch this. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back into his house. After that, Micah was like, yeah, you got it. You know what I'm saying? You got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to go home. I can, I can get 20 E5s. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I can do that thing. You got it. Right? Dan went on their darn way at the end of the chapter. Hmm. Keep going. And they took the things that Micah had made and the priest which he had and came to Laish unto a people that were quiet and secure. Mm -hmm. And they smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. Mm -hmm. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon. Mm -hmm. And they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley of Laith, and it was in the valley that lieth by Beth Rehob. And they built a city and dwelt there. And they called the name of that city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Albeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven in it, image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. Look at that. They did not, they, they didn't, they didn't make a priest out of anybody now. Mm -hmm. They took our brothers, the, the tribe of Manasseh, and who else? The tribe of Manasseh. And who else? Uh, uh, it was Gershom, Gershom in there too, right? The son All of right? Gershom, one of the Levites. Yeah. Right? So they took some of the Levites and mixed them, some, some of the tribe of Manasseh. Those are all our brothers. And just made them priests. No, right? No, 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 no. no. I saying Jonathan, the son of Gershon, oh, the son of Manasseh. So oh, Gershon, yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. It was Manasseh. Oh, so it was Manasseh, my fault. Yeah. Right? So they took, they took Manasseh. They said, you know what? Y'all can be our priest too. They didn't care what the, they didn't care how the book laid out because at this time everybody was doing it according to what they know. He said that thing rocked like that to the captivity. What? So what is what is what is that akin to now? What is that like now? How about like women pastors? That's true. Right? People are making anybody, you know what I'm saying? You sit up there with pastor, you know what I'm saying? Women pastors. Boom. Right? All this stuff, you, you you look at it in the book and you see it's important that we see how when I when I read the book, I try to when especially when I'm reading the uh, the book about like someone making mistakes in the book, I try to see how we could make those same mistakes today. Right, because then that helps you. Now you can look at it and be like, oh, like now I identify. We doing the same thing. How did they overcome it? What did God tell them to overcome that issue? Right? To go overcome the you know, to overcome being deceived or overcome whatever the case may be. You look at it and be like, oh, we doing the same thing right now. It helps. All right? That's the end of the chapter? No. All right, let's see. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he had, which he made, all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. And that's it. All right. 
So the house, the house of the Most High God, the tabernacle that Moses put together, that, that gets carried around. When we came into the land, that went to a place called Shiloh. Okay. Shiloh is, huh? Uh, Shiloh is where, uh, isn't that where Joseph was? Uh, Ephraim. It's in Ephraim, but wasn't Joseph there? Um, I think Joseph, I think Joseph lived in Shiloh, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that though. Um, but yeah, Shiloh is where the temple went, and, and it was in Mount Ephraim. The tabernacle. Uh, yeah, the tabernacle. Um, and it was in Mount Ephraim, right? So that's where that's where it was, and it stayed there until we ain't gonna read about it, but until Solomon ended up building the temple. So they left Shiloh. David, David actually took the tabernacle too. Huh? David took it from Shiloh to build the temple, but it stayed. But yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So it technically came right before, but it was it, it was because the temple was being built is when it got moved, and I think the altar, the um, the uh, the ark, you know what I'm saying? They tried to bring the ark up, you know what I'm saying, for a certain period of time, and that thing had to stay in uh, e some Edom, yeah. Obed Edom, so. Obed Edom is what it was, you know what I'm saying? It had to stay in Edom. So we we'll get to all that the parts of the history, but you know what I'm saying? It's little things like that. I, I want y'all to kind of remember because we gonna revisit it, and there's some prophecy that's attached to it as well. You know what I'm saying? That we've already read, but we still gonna go back and revisit some of that stuff, and then it'll make more sense as you start to connect those dots. All right, any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.